my area of interest is robotics. My area of interest is basically robotics and object detection. So that's why I'm, I joined this session and class. Which semester you are in, Bipin? I'm in seventh semester, ma'am. Okay. Shall we go to the next one, uh, Arvind? You want to ask something? Yes. No, no, no. Let them just introduce uh, yeah, before okay. we kick start the things. Okay, okay. Pankaj, your turn now. Pankaj Pandey. Pankaj Pandey, you there? Anjali? Am I audible? Anjali? Anjali Kadmi? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. You please yes, tell your semester and your, uh, uh, you know, interest towards this club. Why is that? What's your interest and what is that you expect? What? Hmm. I'm studying in Japan. I would like to uh, get into deep learning or machine learning. Uh, I want to be perfect in this. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. What about Pankaj? Pankaj Pandey? No, he is not a Supramanya. Yeah. See, I, I I expect you to have a hundred percent interaction with the learning. It should not be like a one way. Uh, it is like uh, it should be both ways. And uh, the only way to express things is what what you know and what you want to learn. So that is why I wanted to interact with you people because few days back I interviewed few of the students they boasted as though they know everything but when we ask basic questions they, they couldn't able to answer so i want you not to fall into that category so i want this club to help you people to learn to lay down the basics the basics is the most important why we have why i am now at present position or what i'm doing is because I learned the basics in a very hard manner. The basics are the very important things that what we do actually. So here my role is to make you understand the basics such that if you tell I want, I have no something about machine learning or deep learning, you need to address or tell to some professionals. Okay. Okay. You, he knows few things and uh, I am not new to guiding the students and I've been guiding RV engineering students from past four years and lots of students whom I have uh, made them to do the work or anything they have been placed in a very nice company and doing very well one simple incidence is uh, during lockdown I helped few of the students in uh, IOT based machine learning now they are just six semester or seven semester students. They got placed in very nice companies and their projects really helped. And we were able to even publish a paper. So I, I want the same interaction to be done uh, such that you people learn new things, work like as Bipin told, he wants to do robotics. I am there to help uh, you people to do robotics because I am from computer science, but only computer science will not help you. We need to go cross platform. So I want you people to open up and interact more actually. So coming to, because I want to know the interest. So I was writing down, okay, robotics. So I wanted just to know what you people are wanted, want to do and what not to do. So I just wanted to have a free conversation uh, with you people before we interact or I, I start talking about the word machine learning. So let us uh, have a few
few more people to talk here like with jeevan can you introduce yourself and uh, hello jeevan yeah can you please tell about yourself yes sir i'm i am in first semester and i love uh, robotics uh, so I, i like to be in this club sir okay so you are, you want robotics what about uh, rahul rahul uh hello sir i am currently in the fifth sem actually i am uh, interested in data science uh currently i am familiar with uh, basic concepts of machine learning and deep learning and uh, python with numpy and pandas uh, so i am looking forward to bridge the gap between uh, theory to practice good 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 what about praveen praveen are you there praveen meghraj okay okay so guys uh, let us not uh, so let us not uh, i let us have an interactive session uh, such that uh, we learn new things ma'am you want to tell anything hello good afternoon everyone a warm welcome to each and every one of you it's my pleasure to welcome mr arvin srinivas for this discussion i welcome you arvin thank you ma'am Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this club as a mentor and uh, we really thankful to you for being a mentor and we even in your busy schedule you are with us today and i thank you very much uh, you can take over the session arvin you can start off now yes so let us uh, it is a distributed crowd Uh, distributed crowd we have where few students are from seventh semester and fifth and third and uh, could that uh, today we will not go in depth let us have an introductory talk and uh, in the coming weeks uh, we will go in depth on the new things that we can learn about so let me start with uh, the introduction to machine learning and uh, i will not do work i will not talk about convolution neural networks today because uh, if you want we can have it on another day about uh, the convolution neural networks so the outline of this talk will be the type the type of machine learning problems and the steps to so solve machine learning problem and the next thing is i will not talk about deep learning today but i will talk about artificial neural network that is a basic that is a basic of the deep neural network then uh, then gradually we can talk about image classification then uh, segmentation and object detection the as we been told so we can go about with a step by step manner so what is machine learning so it is a subset of computer science which gives a computer the, the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed so here when we when you start pro, in, start learning the programming in the first semester we would exclusively program to do some activity but in machine learning we doesn't program exclusively to do some activity but we give the data and based on the data we make the program to learn and about it so it was told by author samuels in way back in 1959 not now it was told in 1959 so tom mitchell in 1997 told about a program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of task t and perform the measurement t if the performance at the task t is measured by p improves with experience so what does it mean so why with the experience we learn new things when we give a task we perform the task and the performance is been measured like if the performance of the task q 
keeps on improving with our experience that is called as machine learning one example i can tell you is initially when we prepare some new dish it might not be good the performance might be an average but constantly if you are cooking the performance of the the taste of the dish might improve and you might become a super cook the same thing happened during the pandemic where we had lockdowns no zomatos no no swiggies everyone started to cook everyone learned the cooking skills like that we were able to learn with our experience and our intelligence also improved in the manner that what we were able to do that is a simple as machine learning so using data is is called as training in machine learning and answering a question is the prediction so we take a data and answer the questions that is what is simple as simple words we can tell about what is machine learning so why everyone wants to learn machine learning that to a third semester student want to learn machine learning when we studied our engineering we didn't knew anything about machine learning or anything hardly we knew okay there is a concept called artificial intelligence that's it but there was nothing a big know how to tell about it. what is artificial intelligence at when we studied engineering around 20 i think 18 around 10 15 15 to 15 years back i think not 15 13 years back so why what is the main the main thing is it is a era of data wherever we know we have been having lots and lots of data and all the data are been stored in your mobiles in your hard disks in your systems in your twitter account facebook account instagram account so many data is there and processors are getting they are hungry so the data is available everywhere and the storage has become so cheap where we have got gbs of hard disk for just 3000 4000 rupees Here we can add a pen drive of one one GB or two GB, which is hardly three hundred to four hundred rupees. And where are we getting the data from? We are getting the data from GPS, where we track, where we go everywhere. You can, if you enter into a hotel, you will get to know about the hotel. If you drive from one place to another place, you will be knowing where the where you have been going. If you have booked a railway ticket or a air ticket the gmail will be knowing oh if this guy will be traveling to this this place there are cameras where you take your selfies uh, you upload as uh, um, as your dps or anywhere and there are microphones that record all the data support so and you are always connected to internet everything is getting uploaded to cloud and uh, it is you and it is been permanently stored where jeep where google is giving 25 gb of uh, internet storage google drive is there everything is there and what are the services there are lots of cloud services now available where you have got online storage infrastructure and there are uh, there are applications like youtube gmail facebook twitter netflix netflix etc so the big data era has made the machine learning become so crazy that everyone wants to learn machine learning but i want to tell you the mission the basic of machine learning is mathematics the statistics that you will learn in your third year, third semester or fourth semester in m4 or m3 the, that is the most important to know about the machine learning so what are the different machine learning problems like everyone wants to learn machine learning but what are the different types of problems that uh, machine learning has they it has been broadly divided into three categories called supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning what is this unsupervised what is meant by supervised learning it is called as child learning where uh, we have when we are born as a human 
we don't know anything we want to learn new things like you want to learn machine learning you will go to some tutorial you go to coursera you can go to udacity someone needs to teach or any te any teacher will need to teach about microprocessors you need to teach about networks you need to teach about anything once it is being taught we will know, we'll know okay this is what this is what like if if a kid is shown this is an apple this is an orange this is an apple this is a train this is a bus then it can recognize itself so a supervised learning is nothing but learn through examples for which we know the desired output so is this a cat or a dog or this an email spam or a not or a predict the market value of a house given the square meter of the number of houses in a neighborhood so this machine learning is mainly tells about okay this is a cat or a dog or a spam or a not or it can even do prediction where you can predict about market value like if you want to search a house in the neighborhood based on number of rooms you want or a stock or stock market prediction you want or if you want to know about uh, how what is the square like uh, weather forecasting where where for like a one week back they told an orange alert is being given to throughout karnataka especially in north karnataka it will rain heavily how did they do because they got information from satellite images and based on the wind movement the low pressure created they predicted what might be the weather so the prediction is done using unsupervised learning so unsupervised learning can be divided into two categories one is called classification and the regression so some people wants to do object classification like uh, want to tell about the cat or a dog or it is a man or a male or a female or if you want to do the classification it is called as classification the output is discrete whereas if you have a continuous data like a price temperature or stock market so you want to fit a line so fit a line is nothing but y is equal to mx plus c where uh, then we then we then we try to find the error between the between the points to the fitted line the minimal error is taken as a best fit line so this is this is known as regression so regression is been used for the prediction and classification is used to classify the objects so there is another technique called unsupervised learning like for supervised learning we need to have the ground truth such that if, if someone needs to manually annotate this is cat this is dog this is spam this is not a spam this is good this is bad so if you don't have the label data means that you have got huge amount of data but you don't have the label data so if you don't have the label data let the mathematics do the labeling for you such that it groups together so unsupervised learning is nothing but clustering of the data by itself based on the relationship so one example i can give you is if you have attended any marriages you can see group of clusters where all kids will be in one group all aunties might will form a one group all elderly will form a one group how they had formed one group it is mainly because they have similar liking similar understanding of the features as they are having this uh, similar uh, relationship they group together like uh, i can give you one more example like in uh, in your uh, in your phone in your, uh, in the gallery if you go all the photos are group put together like your face photos are group put together your uh, relationship photos are group put together how it is been done based on the past interaction you had number of photos you have taken so based on the relationship between the data the data gets group together this is known as unsupervised learning so by by clustering the data by identifying the hidden correlation 
we do the data classification is using an unsupervised learning. So the next way of learning is called reinforcement learning. So this learning is called as agent interaction with an environment and what and watch for the results of interaction. Here, especially in robotics, this reinforcement learning is being used where we set a positive reward and a negative reward. Like example, if if we fail in an exam, if we don't study, we will fail in the exam. So and if you study, you will pass in the exam. So based on the result we get, we will get to know more about the things. So we interact with the environment and watch for the results what we get. So based on the positive reward or a negative reward, the learning will happen. Like this, the machine learning also tries to learn based on the positive and the negative reward. So any doubts still here? Hello. Does no, anyone sir. of you have doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. If your doubts, you can post it in the chat window. Uh, Arvind, you can see Darwin. Whenever they post the questions, we'll let you know. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, so the next the next important step. Anyone wants to learn machine learning needs to know these five pillars. One is the data gathering, the data pre-processing, feature engineering, algorithm selection and training, and making prediction. So these are the five different steps that you need to know about what, like if you want, if you're solving a machine learning problem, let it be anything, let it be a text, let it be image, let it be uh, sound, let it be anything. So you first is the data gathering. So collect the data from various sources. Like the first thing is the people want, tell I want to do object detection. I want to do uh, some like uh, anomaly detection. But the main thing is we need to have the data. So the data gathering is the first step. The second step is the data, whatever we get might not be in a correct shape or like it not it may not be it might not be useful few might be corrupted few might not be uh, good few might be blurry few might not be helpful to you it might be taken in a dark so you need to do some pre-processing pre-processing is nothing but cleaning of the data like uh, if you if you, take, if you consider a text data to be cleaned we need to clean for any un outliers in the data. If you are, there is a not a number, anything we need to do, not a number. And if you want to do, uh, if you want to uh, do any out, like uh, some, uh, like if there are, there are very less amount of data, we need to do some, uh, by adding the data, by the process is called as data augmentation. So these are the different steps that you need to carry out. The next step is feature engineering. So what is this feature engineering? We can't like, um, I want student to describe an apple, please. Please. So it's a fruit. Yeah. It's red in color. One minute, one minute, one minute. It is a fruit. Okay. Next. It is? It's red in color. Okay. Next. Next. It's healthy. 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 How healthy? How, how you will tell it is healthy? Okay. 
it will consider yeah. he- healthy based on the texture okay and so proverb proverb is also there about apple which is an apple a day keeps a doctor away okay next we can also go, go for the weight we can expect the weight to be around 100 to 150 gram okay shape hmm with vitamin c okay shape next rich in vitamins okay. okay vitamins so these are all so these are all uh, in text how can we represent okay the red in color is been represented in uh, in numbers a like 255 255 255 then we will then if it is healthy it is been labeled as it is been featured as one shape is round so round means we have a we have the formula um, pi r square or the circle formula or any formula is there for the shape so vitamins means again vitamins is been considered as vitamin a vitamin c vitamin d so it is basically this vitamins are again some numbers so what we are doing here is whatever is the object here is been converted to a numerical number the numerical number is nothing but a feature let it be a text text is been converted into vector image is converted into a feature sound is converted into a feature so what we are doing is from the natural source we are converting them to a number format so this num this this now converting to a number format is called as the feature engineering understood hello yes sir so yes, sir. this yes, sir. This, so this fe- this conversion of a, to a feature engineering can be done with lots of like when we when when we are doing a machine learning based algorithm we can use fast fourier transformation then we can use color based features we can use shape based features then we can use moments we can use uh, uh caber filters so these are the different uh, feature engine like features that uh, is been that can be used uh, to do the uh, feature engineering the main thing you you need to understand is the features engineering or the feature selection is nothing but the day the Inter- like interpreting some object in the na- in the numerical format is called as the feature engineering so once we have the once we have uh, we have the numbers so we have we we know the apple is of red color so it is round in color it is round in shape then uh, it is it contains uh, some uh, vitamins uh, it contains vitamins then uh, another what another thing what you what was told about apples okay so we then we can we can represent this as this 255 255 255 this is represented as red round is being used like uh, based on the diameter or the circumference we will give some it is uh, around uh, 3 cm diameter and vitamins is some numbers so then finally we will tell it is an apple so this whatever is being told this is called as a feature and this is called as a label means we are tell we are labeling labeling that if this feature is there it is known as an apple for the computer to understand understood yes sir 
so once once we have uh, once we have uh, lot we have we have this features we can't manually tell okay if this feature is an apple this feature is an orange or this is a cat or this is a dog or anything so what we do is we give it to a machine learning algorithm so machine learning algorithms can be a neural network support vector machine random forest these are the popular machine learning algorithms and logistic regressions are the different machine learning algorithms these are these algorithms will try to fit a line will fit, try to fit a line such that the data is being divided between an apple to an orange and tell if if we get this like this data then it automatically classifies or predicts like okay this is an apple or this is a orange okay so that is the next step Main, mainly we do algorithm selection and training and then make the prediction so these are the four different steps so i have told about the data gathering where uh, uh, might depend on the human human work where manually we need to label for the supervised learning and uh, domain knowledge may may be needed for an expert why this domain knowledge is needed example uh, if you are looking at an mri or a ct or any satellite image or any any of the data we need to know okay this is where the tumor has happened for an mri data or this is where there is a fat in the data or this is where someone needs to tell okay this is a liver this is a kidney or, or this is a covid this is non covid so domain experts is needed and uh, then there there are more it is like algorithm leads law like more amount of data so quality and the quantity of the data is the most important to get more accuracy so this is uh, more about the data gathering then the next step is uh, data pre processing where the data might have some missing values outliers bad encoder long wrong labeling and bias data so all these all these uh, needs to be removed so important thing is this bias bias in the sense means wh whenever we are doing any al machine learning or anything we try to work we have some data and we will be working only for the particular data once a new data has been given it might not work i can give a simple example we might be learning example when we studied engineering they used to tell okay from one one chapter two two questions will come and we we used to study only three or four sections we never used to study the another part or anything that is not been there if a questions more questions were asked from there we couldn't able to answer so like that what happens is uh, when we uh, well, we we train up train the model to a particular data and if a new data has been given if it doesn't uh, tell about uh, what we have it is it is about uh, then it is a failed model so we need to have more generalization more generalization is better when we have more amount of data or more wider aspect of the data rather than uh, focusing on particular one type of data and feature engineering i have shown i have told you feature engineering is uh, is an in individual measurable property or a phenomena being observed our uh, input is been represented by set of features so that is called as the feature engineering so feature engineering is nothing but it is an art to know the knowledge of the data so there are two steps to be done one is variable transformation and another is the feature creation so the algorithm selection so the training the goal of training is making a corrective prediction as often as possible so it has been an it, it is an incremental improvement that we'll be doing use a metric to evaluate the performance and compare the solution 
and hyperparameters are need to be tuned that is an art of science so gradually we you will be understanding what is this hyperparameter what is this uh, uh, metrics what are the improve like how to improve the algorithm and how to generate more once you do some hands on experience so ultimately making a prediction is this is the training phase where we have the labels samples the samples ha have been converted into a uh, feature extraction features have been taken and a machine learning model is been trained then in the prediction phase we have the input feature extraction features transfer um, we the, the trained classifier and then the label finally whatever what we have learned we have learned a machine learning is an is an intelligent use of data to answer questions it 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 enables an exponential increase in the computer power and data availability there are three types of problems problems can be solved using machine learning or supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning five steps for a very machine learning solution is data gathering data pre processing feature engineering algorithm selection and training and making predictions any questions hello students any questions no arvin uh, no no doubt students you can okay okay i i i want to know when did you study this equation this is not a class you can talk with me freely when did you learn this in 8 or 9 standard huh? in 8 or 9 standard what is this equation slope 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 equation right yes so this is a line and we want to find a slope of this line and to find the slope of this line we use y is equal to mx plus c correct right yes sir yes sir entire data science or entire deep learning is about this y is equal to mx plus c no one will tell but i am telling like neural networks is based on this mx plus c any algorithm is based on this y is equal to mx plus c what we are doing we are finding a slope slope is nothing but what a derivative derivative is how how much is the change that has happened from one point to another point so this y is equal to mx plus c is the basic or basic form formula for your machine learning where m where x is our data x is our data i'll take a new thing and m is the weights and c is the bias do you remember this things hello Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. See here, here where we, um, where the math, where where we where we come to know about mathematics, where how the math is being used, and uh, this is where we will be interact. How where you were uh, Taylor series, then Jacobians. uh then uh, uh chain uh, chain rule where it is been applied like i didn't enjoy mathematics really but when i studied machine learning i really came to know oh this is maths if anyone has told me or taught me maths like this i would have understood better like why fft why we why we 
have lots of lot of statistics why mean why standard deviation why variance i really didn't knew really i didn't knew like i okay there was a problem statement and i try to solve the problem that's it i didn't knew why we have this eigen value eigen vector really i didn't knew but here you will be knowing each and every usage of it as we go on like uh, once one applications or one one things you will be knowing all about okay about all this so y is equal to mx plus c so this is a basic formula to calculate the slope of a line so what is this line about so like Okay, let me consider these x's are the houses, and uh, the the houses are uh, one one BHK, two BHK, and three BHK. Uh, I think. Uh, okay. So I I want I want you I want a house of two BHK with six thousand as my constraint. My I can only pay up to. i can pay up to my i want a 2 bhk house and my constraint is 6k how how can we know how many houses i can get how many houses i can get please can you tell me how can i do it hello student you guys everyone to be attentive and you please answer to the questions no immediate response uh, gives more interest for him to teach first we can eliminate houses of 1 bhk and 3 bhk okay so a simple a simple thing is uh, we can fit we i i want my my constraint is 6k and i want 2 bhk so this is the yeah, this is the intersection point so from here i can try i can fit a line correct right hello yes, yes sir so then so then So wait, my mouse is not moving. Sorry, where is it? Sorry. Ah, uh, so y is equal to m x plus c. So first is I need to find I need to find y. So means what? I have fitted a line. i will i will see how much is for this line what is the error for the error is nothing but uh, whether it is a best fit like okay for for my for my thing i have got how many 2 bhk houses i have got 2 bhk houses uh, for the line that i have fit so the error Yes. Okay. The error is no. My mouse is not coming. Sorry. The error to to this is very minimal. Okay. To this is also very minimal. So error to this is very far. Okay. This is on the line, but this is one bhk. So we we eliminate this point. So we have we have we have got two uh two. Uh, two, uh, two, two houses for the data. So by fitting a line, we came to know that okay, we are able to 
predict if you give any requirement how much data or uh, like how many houses you can find so this fitting a line is simply is simply called as the linear regression the method is called as linear regression where we try to fit a line and do a prediction based on the error the error is the error this error is called as mean square error so i want you people to note down all this and read in your free time what is meant by mean square error what is meant by linear regression so that it will be helpful when when you being being taught what is about in the coming days so what is what we are doing here we are trying to minimize the error has every has anyone have it, everyone has gone to grocery store right yes sir not gone yes, to grocery store okay so you go to a grocery store and order a 5 kg of sugar so you order a 5 kg of sugar so a guy the grocery guy the the, the 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 what he will do he'll play, he'll bring a bag of sugar and uh, he'll put it on the weighing scale correct right yes sir yes sir so, so what yes, sir. happens when when he when he puts that on a weighing scale do you think it will be 5 kg exactly no no sir okay. so it might it might be like 4.5 or something right yes sir so so what we yes, need is 5 kg so what he will do he adds few more sugar to it correct right yes sir yes sir so so it becomes 4.7 so it, it this is 5 so here what here what was the error the error was 0.5 kg now it became 0.3 kg then again he will add few more to it it becomes 4.9 or something so error became 0.1 then he might add few more such that it becomes 5 so what is happening he is reducing the error that is being created how he is reducing the error by adding some more amount by of adding sugar. some more by adding by some adding more, more amount of sugar okay sugar is what here data sugar is data hmm then <coughs> so sugar is data what is this weight pizza constraint constraint correct right it is a constraint correct right hmm then uh then what slowly slowly he is adding the data to solve what error no no to solve the constraint hello yes, yes sir so yes sir so what so what so what we are doing here we have we have y and we we have a function f of x we are trying to solve this function f of x to solve for y so this is what we are doing and this solving for a constraint is known as optimization understood yes sir so anyone ask what is optimization it is simply you can tell it is for a constraint we are find we are trying to find a optimal solution how we are trying to find an optimal solution by adding weights or removing weights what is weights weights are nothing but random numbers so a sugar is nothing but a sugar is not a data for us it is a random it is a sugar is an item but uh, we are adding the data that is weights so the weights are nothing but the random number that is being added such that it solves our constraint so once we multiply the weights to the data then we will try to solve the constraint so the first step 
of for the for the first step what we do is y is equal to mx plus c where c we will keep it as 1 this is our data so this is our data we try to multiply this data with some random number so let it be a random number between 0 and 1 let it be 0.5 let the data might be something like uh, like it is 0.3 or something we will get z so once we multiply this this 0.5 into 0.3 is how much 0.15 i am not telling you maths but i am telling you the steps to solve neural networks so the first step of neural network is we multiply a random number with the data to get some z so this z is is a linear data so this is linear so to avoid this linear we we need to make it non linear so we multiply with an activation function so i will come to the activation functions later so what is this activation function so the activation function is the data is made from non linear to linear so multiply once we once we do this now once we multiply this z with the with activation function we will get z dash then finally we use the loss function to find what is the difference what we want to the activation to the activation function so solving this loss is called as gradient descent so this is what we are trying to solve in the neural network we are trying to reduce the loss such that the algorithm learns by itself so coming to the neural networks here the first model of the neural networks were proposed in was proposed in the year 1943 the analogy of a human brain was generally excavated given some input text the neural network calculates the sum output y using the set of weights w so here x1 x2 x3 are nothing but the way numbers we multiply with some random number that is weights then we sum we do the sum then we do an act we do the activation function then the final output is been obtained so this is a basic of the neural networks then it came uh, one hidden layer that is called multi level perceptron then the if you have multiple hidden layers it is called deep neural network so another important concept that you need to know before like in during the course of machine learning all the algorithms will have these things loss function linear regression has loss function logistic regression has loss function every algorithm has loss functions so the loss functions are nothing but weights are being adjusted that is learn from the data the idea is define a loss to tell how close the network is to generate the desired output minimizing the loss is an optimization problem with continuous and differentiable loss function we can apply a gradient descent so this is what i wanted to talk with you image classification let us not take it today uh, once we are uh, once we are progressing uh, we can have this image classification because i don't want the people to get trapped to the image based uh, data science i want you people to work on pure database database data based data science okay so any questions was i was i was boring no sir no sir okay okay so the next question uh, comes is uh, the implementation i i want you people not to be bookish i want you people to start programming if you know if you have programming knowledge 
you can crack interviews you can get into a good placements really uh, you need to know programming without don't be afraid of programming there are lots of open source uh, platforms to do the programming programming is an art where even with my 12 years of experience daily i am coding now i am not into a managerial position so i really do programming and that is what is helping me so how to do the programming so everyone has google account right yes sir yes so yes, sir. you you know google collabs right yes sir yes, yes sir okay for few people who doesn't know google collabs uh, let let me start from the basic so if you if you go to your google drive if you go to your google drive click on new then go to more there is there is an option called as google collaboratories so if you click on that you you will it will open up python jupyter notebook so what is this jupyter notebook so python can be programmed using lots of interfaces so jupyter notebook is nothing but an interactive uh, coding uh, uh, coding uh, platform where you write a code and you can check what is an output like example if y is equal to 10 where y is equal to 10 and uh, of y it will it will tell what is y like it will print the output here so you will able you will be able to know uh, the output then and there itself so this google collaboratories does have uh, you need not install anything you need not uh, install anaconda you need not install you, the, you you don't need to have a gpu you don't need to have a cpu only you need is an internet connection you can go to runtime you can go to change runtime type you can take you can ch- you can take gpu if you want and you can save it so all the algorithm what we type will be stored in the we will run using the gpu so this is and also you can mount your uh, you, you, you can mount your drive to the google collabs where uh, you can use uh, one minute i forgot the syntax drive dot google hmm. okay from google dot collabs import drive then right on command so if you run this it will click it will tell to click on this you can choose your google account then allow allow it then you need to copy this uh, password it has been given then then paste it here so once you have done everything what is in your drive will be mounted here and you can use that as a storage where you can you, you can write the code save the code read the data from the drive every, everything can be done so uh, so now this drive is been mounted so you can also click on here uh, to connect to the drive but uh, now i used it as a program to 
mount or mount my drive everything so i have i have made an introduction python numpy and matplot uh, jupyter notebook so i will share with you people i don't know how to share if you can let me know how to share you can go through this this is having extensive whole of python uh, numpy and uh, scipy even matplot which is extensively being used it will be like a brush up for you i can go through this in the coming days uh, with how how to do about everything i have covered that is be that is needed for uh, this uh, machine learning or data science so any interviewer might ask the questions from these topics that i have listed uh, there are i don't see much uh, difference they might ask they might ask about how to create a dictionary what is the uh, indexing of the dictionary everything i have covered here so you can go through live line by line it will take long time but uh, we can have uh, this session next week uh, if you people are free madam hello yes sir okay one second okay hello am i audible arvind yes ma'am any doubts you have students no ma'am no ma'am okay thank you so much arvind for the interactive session actually it was very good because uh, they were able to look at the collapse and all no they are not mm. that familiar i think so only few people will be aware of it no i i i want some uh, location where i can share the course with them sir yeah, sir, sir you can share in the whatsapp group sir no no don't want whatsapp no, is arvind that just communication ha you know. huh. Yes, sir. Arvind, actually, we are creating a YouTube channel, Arvind. I'll just let you know with the playlist once it is created, so that okay. we we'll dedicate this ML uh, all learning stuffs to be dumped in that particular. Uh, okay. No, in a Google Drive. Uh, if you if you share a Google Drive or anything, I can push all the content to it. Yeah, sure, Arvind. I'll just uh, give you that link. I'll plan mm -hmm. for it and I'll let you. Know. I'll just pass it on to you. Okay. So I I want. like one more thing i want you people to list what you want to do and uh, what you want to learn okay it is on it is per student you are uh, asking them yes. to specify no arvind each and every student along with your usn yes you just uh, I, we will share a google form with you that will be fine no hmm. arvind so that yeah, you get to know what is their interest yeah. yeah yeah excel or anything no in the long like when we are going forward right to make groups right it will be helpful am i audible yes yes yeah so, so that will be fine no we'll send across yes ma'am when when, when when like when we are going forward like yeah. if they want to work on robotics okay few people who wants to work on robotics and we group put together and they can make a project with robotics Mm -hmm. if they want to do with uh, text uh, they can uh, work with the text mm -hmm. so i i i i want to show one one thing before i end the session like in 2018 we had the karnataka election right with the general election hello yeah arvin there is some yes. network issue yes sir yeah so i yes, my cousin my my cousin was uh, doing her uh, msc so i made her to do twitter analysis handler okay uh, to predict who will win the karnataka election this this one was based on the twitter analysis that we had done this is our thesis uh, it is a huge thesis but uh, i will show you what we predicted before elections and what happened we know and this was a prediction we done we couldn't able to publish this or anything because it might lead to some controversies 
I will show you the result. Okay, this is the result. So this was uh, the Twitter hash table that uh, Twitter handlers she took actually. One was uh, I INC Karnataka at Sidramaya at uh, BJP for Karnataka BSY BSY BJP HD Kumaraswamy and Nama HDK. So these were the different Twitter handlers were taken. And this was we predicted based on we got negative trend towards Congress than BJP. Chances for BJP winning is high, but no clear rate for both parties according to Twitter analysis. So we know what happened. So we told accuracy of the result for BJP is 52 percent. Accuracy of the results for Congress was 35 and the BG in JDS was 13. So we, we even told that prediction for BJP was swinging between minus like 49 to 59 percent. The Congress might be 47 to 57 and the JDS is 13 percent. We got the exact result what, what, what it came actually. So this is this has been recorded in her thesis but before we had this election we had we, before the results we had this prediction done using twitter so i want why i'm showing this is you can do you can do projects like you can work on stuff like these and learn new things okay Hello. Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are lots of use cases I uh, I can share with you people what I am doing. So I can I will share my view of the things that I have done such that you can see and do such that it will be helpful, it will be motivating for you people to come up with some problem statements and work. Okay. Exactly, Erwin. Once if they go through the use cases, not they at least they'll get some interest. Or these have the problem statements that we yeah, can. Yeah, in the next. Yeah, in the next. Uh, in the next week, if they are free, I will go through the use cases. Like whatever I have done, it will be boring for you. It will be same. <laughs> huh? It will be good if you share those use cases, Erwin. They'll get to know. You, we can uh, work actually, on all these things. Actually, I'm, plan for some no, actually I am creating my website. It is not complete. I might complete uh, by this week. Uh, then they can go through it actually. Okay. Um, I don't remember uh, my, yeah. So, um, so in autonomous vehicle, uh, we, we have done this vision based driver assistance using near object detections uh, mm -hmm. obstacle sensing under un unstructured traffic environment then this is an autonomous obstacle detection avoidance using reinforcement learning where it was the best paper award then there was this another work called autonomous vehicle obstacle avoidance using dynamic in, in dynamic environment uh, mm -hmm using MLP Sarsa, then there was another paper like work, the traffic light recognition for autonomous vehicle by annexing the machine learning and deep learning, then vision based uh, speed breaker detection, then if you can go to the precision farming, the edge computing based smart aquaphonics monitoring using deep learning in IoT. So this was done by six semester students. Really, they made the hardware, everything they had done. Then real time detection of weed plant in the pulse, pulse crop field drone with IoT, then fish detection and tracking uh, in pisciculture environment. So I will share this, this is under construction yet. So in remote sensing also I had worked. So these are the, I'm not a genius or anything. But uh, I can tell you, hard work, education will help you. That's it. So, hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Keep in touch. Keep me. Keep me posted about the progress. So, 
we can have few more sections uh, that will motivate you people hello ha uh, thank you so much arvin thank you so okay, much for you. your time and all your effort that you have put in <laughs> for thank this you. session thank you ma'am students thank do you, you have any other uh, stuff to be discussed nikit you there it is uh, nikit here you are coming ma'am nikit you got the point no you have to post it to arvin sir regarding the students uh, interest and uh, their skill set they have towards this machine learning and all we'll just post no, it ma'am i don't want skill set ma'am i want no, to no. know i but want to you get to know what is the crowd and what is the knowledge that they have we can plan no arvin so i thought correct ma'am correct ma'am hmm. uh, like i i i want to see i want to push people if they are ready i will i can push people to work on so many good projects it is left to the students so if they want to learn really it is an exciting field it is where you you can get to know more cool and you will be paid more also if, if you get a job here okay in this field so it is beneficial for you people you have time utilize it resources are there and people are there to help you out i request all the students to make use of this opportunity properly so that you will get some idea and you can learn according to the plan that we have scheduled is that fine shall we all work together yes ma'am yes ma'am your yes, interest should yes, be there only then whatever we are planning will make it an uh, i mean success like should be more effort should be from the student end correct so it is it is for you people it is not for us okay shall we wind up for today then yes ma'am yeah yeah okay it will thank be so much, thank you ma'am thank you thanks a lot thank you sir Have thank nice you sir thank, thank you, you.